Hello custom collectors and welcome to a new video. Today we're kind of going into a new direction. Since I have a 3D printer now, I can print whatever I want, which brings a ton of possibilities for the future. It seems like Jack Specific is not doing any new stuff anymore, so it gets more difficult to purchase them. However, I still have a few of them laying around, so you will also see new Jack Specific or new custom collectibles in the future. But at the same time, I already have a ton of cool statues in the pipeline for 3D printing. And today we are painting this awesome Deadpool bust from Max3D, which you can download over on Thingiverse. If you want to download the file yourself, you can find a link in the description. Before 3D printing, of which I unfortunately don't have any footage, I scaled the file to 1200% to roughly get a one-third scale bust. After printing, I just used some putty for the really rough spots, otherwise I directly started with spray filler. Here you can see that I masked the stitches for the shoulder pads to not get too much spray filler there. With spray filler it's a delicate balance of using enough spray filler to get rid of the print lines but at the same time you can't use too much because you will lose all your details. So I gave all the parts about 5 or 6 layers of spray filler followed by sanding. With FTM 3D printers you usually have the problem that the top surface looks not too good, which you can see here, and that would have been too much struggle to sand it down, so I printed them out four times and glued the ugly looking sides together. Afterwards I just had to remove the original course guards from the sword handle. And then I glued everything together with ordinary super glue. Really rough printing lines can be cut off with an X-Acto knife. And then finally, after a bunch of spray filler and sanding, I was able to start the painting process. I started with a pale flash for the intestines. For large areas like this I use the airbrush and for small details I use a paintbrush. Definitely the most time-consuming part of this project was masking off all the parts for airbrushing. For the upper torso that you can see here, I think it took me 45 minutes just to prepare the part for painting. But as annoying and time-consuming masking is, it's really, really satisfying to unwrap the present after painting. Mm -hmm. 
and then I cleaned up the edges with a paintbrush. After another 30 minutes of masking, I painted the shoulder pads in olive green. I thought that that would look cool, but it didn't. Because it's so fun, another 30 minutes of masking and then painting it black. I used a paintbrush and a bone white color for the spine. With burnt umber I painted the sword scabbards, the pouches and the belts. Afterwards I masked everything except the bullets and painted them with gunmetal followed by a slight amount of glorious gold. Next up was the belt buckle that I painted with a paintbrush and also gunmetal. Then I used burnt umber again to clean up the edges on the base. And then I painted the lower part of the base with black. Afterwards I started painting the ribcage. I also started with bone white, which you can see here. And then the lungs were painted with gory red. With a mix of tan and pale flesh I painted whatever sits beneath the lungs. The grenades were painted with yellow olive. The sword handles were painted black, the cross guards with gunmetal and then I added details to the sword handles with red. And then I struggled with the Deadpool logo. With the paintbrush I just couldn't get a good enough circle, I either messed it up with too much white or with too much black. That's why I decided to cut out small circles in my masking tape and then I used the airbrush. And that actually turned out pretty good. Before further weathering and detailing I sealed everything with a matte varnish.
For the pocket buttons I used polished gold. I then used light brown mixed with water to give the bone color a little bit more texture. Then I used bloody red for the intestines, also thinned down with water. After I was satisfied with the color, I used gloss varnish to make the intestines look slimy and wet. And of course the varnish will also protect your paint job. And then I used mud brown to give the pouches and belts a weathered leather look. To get the weathered black leather look on the shoulder pads, I dry brushed them with dark grey. Because the leather tends to become a little bit greasy looking, I also used gloss varnish. The sword handles were painted with a black wash to make the color look a little bit more dull. And then I painted on a final coat of matte varnish. I then glued together the sword parts with super glue. For the sword handles, I actually used two different varnishes. For the black part, to make it look like leather, I used a gloss varnish. And for the red part, I used matte varnish to make it look like fabric. And finally, to create shadows on the suit, I used crayon or pastel colors. And after that I was done. Please let me know in the comments whether you also enjoy videos like this where I paint 3D printed stuff. Thank you for watching, enjoy the final reveal and see you next time.